Hello and welcome in the Victam newsroom. My name is Gerrit Heikoop and I'm here to find out what's new, what's hot and what's exciting in Asia's largest feed and grain processing event, Victam Asia 2018. And in this episode, I'm specifically zooming in on the aqua feed development, developments because I'm joined by David Tse from the United States and you're here as a speaker at the aqua feed horizons conference. David, welcome. Good to be here. This afternoon, you're talking about comparing novel single cell technologies for economical fish meal replacements. Let's start with the last part. Why do we need to replace fish meals? Well, fish meal is really the critical component of aquaculture feeds for high value species like marine fish, salmon, and even shrimp. And so fundamentally to look at the bigger picture, uh, aquaculture is probably the fastest growing part of the world food system. And it's outstripped the ability of natural resources, uh, essentially feeding small fish from the wild to big farmed fish um, uh, to keep up. And so alternatives are needed so that we can go beyond catching small bony oily fish off of Peru and grinding them up and separating them out into their protein component, fish meal, and the fat component, fish oil. And um, you know, we think that single cell technology microbes essentially are probably the best way to do that. Yeah, because let's explore that a little bit. Single cell technologies, what is that for the people who've never heard of that before? So when we're talking about single cells, we're talking about uh, microscopic organisms in several categories, could be yeast, uh, microalgae, bacteria, uh, for example. And, um, you know, these are a particularly interesting category of life to produce feed ingredients from uh, because of their variety, um, their ability to uh, consume many different types of inputs, and uh, the speed at which they grow and reproduce. So, so show me the picture. Am I just going to grow some algae and turn that into fish meal, or what challenges do I need to overcome? No. It's, um, there are different challenges with each of those categories. So you mentioned algae. Uh, that's one of the things that I touch on in my talk. Um, algae are naturally good at producing fat. And in fact, algae are the base of the food chain that supplies the healthy omega-3 fatty acids that we like in our salmon and, and other marine fish. Uh, and so most of the industrial players, big companies um, like uh, DSM, for example, uh, are looking at the production of these DHA-rich fish oil replacements from microalgae. And that's probably an appropriate place to do so. Um, but microalgae are not particularly uh, good producers of protein in comparison. And so protein meals from algae are likely to be uh, byproducts or co-products of the oil production. Um, but I, I doubt that they're going to be competitive with other single cell proteins on their own. Yeah, because let's go a little bit further in this comparison, because that's what your talk does, right? You're, you're comparing novel technologies. Which one is, is best for which purpose? Well, so at the lower cost side, um, the plant-based ones can be very good. And uh, essentially that's because we have thousands of years of agricultural expertise. Uh, we've gotten very good at raising grains and oil seeds and nuts. And to a certain extent, those can substitute for fish meal. Uh, there's been a notable success in uh, the last decade or two around soy protein concentrate, uh, which is essentially what happens when you take a soybean meal and remove the carbohydrates and the uh, uh, fats as much as possible to leave a high level of protein. Uh, so we see that is the most used plant ingredient in salmon feeds now, for example, to a mm -hmm. significant margin. Um, but companies are now hitting the limits of how much of that they can include, and there's still a good dose of fish meal in the diets. And so the question becomes, uh, what's next? What, what's next? Beyond so, we, so we have algae yeah. for fat. Mm. We have plant-based and mainly soy for proteins. Yeah. What else is there? So for the higher quality proteins, which have a better amino acid profile that uh, fish and shrimp uh, really need, and that um, can also uh, avoid some of the anti-nutritional factors that are present in plants, because marine fish are not natural consumers of uh, terrestrial plants. Yep. There are substances in them that are difficult for them to digest or cause yep. them problems. And so, uh, you know, we were really looking to bacteria as uh, we believe the, the true solution to a high quality, nutritious protein meal that can be uh, not just produced cost effectively, but it can actually be produced pot potentially entirely 
from waste streams. Ex explain that a little yeah. bit more. So, uh, you know, we've the our economies have gotten pretty good at recycling and reusing uh, solid wastes, whether it's yep. aluminum or glass. Yeah. Uh, liquids as well. Um, a lot of the stuff coming out of the food industry that contains some kind of sugars or carbohydrates gets reused. Gases are really the final frontier for reuse. And uh, so we're particularly interested in bacteria that use gases as their source of energy and carbon. What type of gases are we talking about? Well, so the, the most plentiful one that you would really want is carbon dioxide, which yeah. is the key greenhouse gas. Yes. And it turns out that that is a very good uh, source when paired with hydrogen for certain categories of bacteria. Uh, so-called chemoautotrophs, which just means that they can feed themselves with chemicals. Yeah. And so these are bacteria that are related to uh, types you may have heard of, you know, that evolved billions of years ago to thrive on the seafloor near these hot gas vents. Yeah. Um, and they're also a perfect solution to take these industrial emissions that are polluting our skies and raising uh, temperatures around the world and make them into something potentially significantly, well, clearly much more valuable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and you're basically closing the loop and turning greenhouse gases into fish meal. That's to, right. So, or at least fish meal uh, re replacement. Right, so. So how close to reality or how far from reality is this? Is this, can we do this tomorrow? Well, this is something that has been, uh, there's been work in the lab, in first in academia and now in commercial labs. Um, it's something that is not being done at scale today, uh, but, you know, for particularly high value uh, forms of this, it will be coming to market in the coming years. And just to be clear, what is in the lab? Is it the turning greenhouse gases and feeding bacteria with it or using bacteria as fish meal replacement? So in our lab, it's actually both. So right. we, uh, we take the, we've taken- But Are the bacteria proven as a, as a, a good replacement? Yeah, well, so in fact, we're feeding them to brine shrimp. We have had several generations of brine shrimp uh, in our lab that have eaten nothing else. Uh, besides this bacterial protein source. So if I'm an aqua feed producer or um, I'm a, 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 a fish um, grower, what is my first step to get started with this? So it's largely going to probably start at the feed formulator, someone who's interested in minimizing the cost of the proteins that they're using. And hopefully um, when they look at their ingredient database at some point in the future, uh, our name will pop up and there'll be a Novo meal protein available uh, for them to buy. Exactly, because you're saying the, the, the price levels are competitive with the existing fish meal prices? Yes, exactly. That's the benefit of using such an efficient biological system in these bacteria and negative cost inputs like uh, industrial emissions. Very exciting. Well, David, people who cannot join your talk this afternoon, where can they find more information about this? Uh, the best place about all this would be novonutrients.com. Perfect. Well, David, thank you very much for sharing this insight. And you, thank you very much for watching this episode here from the Victim Newsroom at Victim Asia 2018. If you like this video, hit the like button or share it with someone who's into uh, uh, innovating the aqua feed industry. And if you're curious about more uh, news from the newsroom here at Victim, make sure you check out some of the other videos or you go to victim.com and sign up to our newsletter. Thank you for watching.